I screamed in complete horror when I saw the clown right next to me grabbing the handle as well. He was staring straight into my eyes, grinning maniacally. Hey spooky siblings, welcome to Fear Fridays here on Left on Red. Today's scary story is by Hybrid Pumpkin. And if you like the story, please check out the author's subreddit r slash hybrid pumpkin full of spooky content, polls and discussions. On to the story. There's a clown standing outside my window. When I woke up just 30 minutes ago, I saw it. A disgusting, nightmarish face covered in bright makeup. Its face was caked with pale white, while its lips and the areas around its eyes were red. Sweat had accumulated on its face, causing the red makeup to drip, and it looked like blood. Its painted own smile was unnerving in a way impossible to describe. Just a glimpse of it made my blood run cold, and the clown's big eyes were rolled back into its head, showing nothing but white. Its hair, a tangled wig with curly bright red hair that fluffed up comically tall. A large shiny red nose was centered on its face, gleaming in the dim light provided by my alarm clock. It was dressed in clown attire, atomically large green shirt coated with sequins and baggy blue pants. The sight was terrifying enough to make me scream. I live out in the sticks where the nearest neighbor is a mile away, so screaming was useless. But that also arose the question, how did he get here and why? To get to my house, you would have had to have driven or walked several miles on a rough dirt track, then would have had to walk another hundred yards along a gravel path that led to my house. No one would go this out of their way to scare me. I hadn't even noticed that I had shut my eyes. I slowly opened them and was immediately greeted with a clown's sickening grin. The window he was standing at was parallel to my bed. I wasn't sure what to do. Should I run? Should I call the police? Thoughts raced through my head faster than bullets. Then I noticed that the clown wasn't moving, not breathing or anything. Just standing there like a hideous statue placed directly in front of me, with the only thing separating us being a thin pane of glass. I sat there staring at him for at least 10 minutes, waiting for him to move. Just a twitch, a breath, a slight swaying would at least verify that it was human. It was too lifelike to simply be a statue or a cardboard cutout. But then again, how could he be so perfectly still? Every human has to move a little, no matter how still they stand. This was impossible. I rubbed my eyes, thinking that this might be a dream. It wasn't. I even tried pinching myself, but the clown still stood there, silently. I took a deep breath and shouted, Get off my property or I'm calling the police. My threat came out sounding like a whimper instead of a shout. The clown stood there, sweat still dripping down its face, but no other movement. No sign he had heard what I said. 
I tried again. Listen here. I don't know what sick joke this is, but you are trespassing on my property. I'm gonna call the cops if you don't leave right now. Again, the clown betrayed no acknowledgement of myself. He stared right at me completely and perfectly still. Then I made a stupid decision. I stood up slowly, carefully, pushing my bedsheets aside. I maintained a steady stare on the clown as I approached the window. Now standing less than a yard away from it, it seemed so much more real, so much more terrifying. The sweat dripping from its face was clear. The makeup was splattered on its face as if he had done it himself. Now that I was closer, I could see its teeth, barely visible from across the room. They were a sickening shade of yellow with little bits of red seeping through between them. I got as close as I could to the window to examine the clown further. Now I was able to look down even further and saw two baby blue shoes covered in pink polka dots that were too big for normal feet. On the ground next to him lay one of those bulb horn clowns normally carried. The ground around him was covered in red makeup that had formed a puddle around its feet. I wanted to vomit. Why was this clown here? What did it want from me? Then I did something really truly stupid and opened the window. <laughs> Rookie move, my friend. Rookie move. I know, right? The sound of the window scraping against the side of its frame tore through the silence like a knife. The cold air entered my house causing me to shiver. I couldn't see much beyond the trespasser as he blocked most of my view. Now that there was nothing separating us, the silence was unbearable. I felt that at any moment he would grab me and drag me into the darkness beyond and no one would know. I reached out slowly, carefully and grabbed the clown's baggy green shirt. Then I touched its face. It was skin. The clown was definitely not a statue. As I pulled my fingers away, a glob of white makeup came with me. I wiped it off on the clown's shirt. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did he ask Mr. Clown before touching him? Rude. Mm-hmm. Throughout all of this, the clown remained still. He showed no signs of life. He did not blink, did not twitch. He did not breathe. The only thing resembling life was the sweat that poured down its face. I slammed the window shut, unsure of what to do. I made sure the window was locked, then walked downstairs. I decided to grab a glass of water, then call the police. Then I could at least rest assured that help was coming. As the cool water rushed into the glass, I thought I heard something. Something that sounded like a shriek. It didn't sound quite human, but it didn't sound animal either. It's hard to describe the sound that I heard, and even so, the sound was obstructed by the noise coming from the sink. I turned off the faucet and listened. Nothing. Silence. Was it my imagination? Was my mind playing tricks on me? I couldn't tell. I sat down at my counter and drank my water. I wasn't in a rush, as I figured that he would stay still at my window, as he had earlier for heaven knows how long. Something fishy was going on, sure. But I'm six foot five and weigh to 40 pounds. On top of that, I have a black belt in Taekwondo. So if someone tried to mess with me, they would regret it. Sorry to break it to you, buddy. 
Those things don't mean much in the paranormal realm. <laughs> <laughs> then I made the mistake of glancing to my right at the window, and I saw something horrifying. The same clown who was at my window earlier was standing completely still at this window, staring at me with wide eyes. It was leaning forward, hands pressed firmly against the glass. Its painted on smile took on a whole new form of menacing in the shadows that danced around its face. I screamed again, startled by the sight. I ran into my living room where my landline was located. As I ran through the hall, I heard the shriek again, this time much louder and clearer. Except now that there was no other noise to obstruct it, I realized that it wasn't a shriek. No, it was something worse. A laugh. A sickening cackle disturbing enough to turn anyone's blood to ice. Oh, I think I got it. Did it go something like this? <laughs> I think you're onto something, Pulte. I soon reached my den and darted towards my landline. I picked it up, quickly dialing 911. But as I attempted to call the number, something bad greeted me. Something very bad. Silence. The line was dead. I began to panic. What was going on? Why was this happening? As I turned to run again, I tripped on something. I looked back on what I had tripped on. The cord. The cord to my phone. It was cut in half by what looked like to be a knife. Bits of wire were exposed on the frayed ends. I stood up shakily someone had been in my house. But where were they? Were they still here? With nothing else to do, I concocted a plan to save myself. I had no other option, it seemed, than to run away. I would exit via the back door, then run the full mile to my nearest neighbor's house. I could use their phone to call the police. It seemed like a long shot with a clown outside, but I had no choice. I turned to the living room window. The clown was standing there now, perfectly still, smiling at me with a sadistic grin. I slowly backed away, keeping a steady watch on him. I was beginning to think that he only moved when I wasn't looking. The creaking of my footsteps on the hardwood floor were the only sounds to be heard. I continued to step away slowly, cautiously, until I reached the back door. I fumbled for the lock and opened it. Now the clown was completely out of my vision, I spun around and took off into the night. As I ran, again, I heard the shrieking laughter of the clown as he pursued me. I didn't know how fast he was, but I ran anyway. I flew through the trees that surrounded my house. I soon lost all sense of direction, but I continued to move in a straight line, or so. I thought. As I ran, the cackling continued. Louder than ever, I was sure it had caught up to me, so I started making sharp turns to slow the clown down. However, each time I did this, the laughter got louder and faster. There were no pauses between each giggle. It never breathed or got tired. I flung myself back out of the woods and towards my house. I had run in a circle. I spun around. The clown was standing, completely still on the edge of the tree line. Continuing to stare at the clown, I made my way back into the house and towards my back door, which I had left unlocked. To get to the door, I was forced to turn a corner on the edge of the house, meaning the thing would be out of my vision. 
As I did this, I sped up drastically. As I reached the door, I turned around to grab the handle. I screamed in complete horror when I saw the clown right next to me grabbing the handle as well. He was staring straight into my eyes, grinning maniacally. A light of insanity burned in its eyes. I leaped into the house. This was followed by another shriek of laughter as he followed me from outside. I ran into my room and slammed the door, locking it. I looked at the window and the shrieking stopped. The clown had stopped in the middle of opening my window. I slammed the window shut on its fingers, to which of course, he betrayed no reaction. I'm writing this now in hopes that someone will find this. Please send help. There's a clown standing outside the window, and if I close my eyes or look away, it will attack. Please help. This clown isn't human. It can't be. Please send help help. And that was Fear Friday. My name is Red and this is Left on Red. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and press the bell notification button so that you get notified every time Polti and I upload a new video. Until next time.